Hey y'all, welcome to Shades of Brown, the podcast that discusses the ever-evolving and sometimes contradicting thoughts of a Black millennial. I'm your host, Allie B, and I'm so very grateful you're here with me for this episode. If this is your first time with me, well, a very special welcome to you, and I hope that you stick around. Um, Today, I wanted to talk about all things travel. So I initially recorded this episode um, back when I first began recording in uh, in late 2019, early 2020. Um, And I was, you know, just batch recording, getting ready to release my very first season. And then the pandemic hit and it just was not relevant, you know, talking about travel and stuff because we were all in the house. (laughs) So I put that on the shelf. I actually got rid of it altogether. But I figured now that we're on the other side of things and we're beginning we're beginning to travel again and airlines have opened up and restrictions have been relaxed. I'm like, you know what? Folks are just sitting again. Let's talk about this again. So yeah, let's talk about all things travel. Before we get into that though, let's get into shades of dating. Shades of Dating is the new segment where I talk about, I typically say me and my guests, but child, I've only had one guest this season so far, so right now it's just me. Um, But yeah, uh, the segment where I talk about all things dating and to further verify that the dating pool really does have pee in it. (laughs) So today's story time is about the time that... Um, I found out a guy I was dating had more children than he initially told me he had. As a matter of fact, I found out that he had another child while dating me. (laughs) And it's not even about that, because that is trifling. It's more so about the way I found out. Oh, my God. Um... So, now, this, this is back in my... I can't even say BC days, like before Christ, because I was for sure, uh, 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 I was saved. I just, you know, I was doing what I wanted to do. So we're going to say I was just living in sin. Yeah, that's what the the saints would say I was living in sin. Let's say that. Um, And I remember um, uh, this particular guy, we had... Going on a break or whatever, and it was one of those times where I'm like, you know what? I know we're on a break, but I would love for him to pull up. You know what I'm saying? One of those, one of those, he should just pull up. So I sent him that whole, like, WID text, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, big head text. Uh... (laughs) And he came over or whatever or whatever, and we, you know, yes, let's fast forward from him coming over to the very next morning, right? All right, so... Boom. Next morning, wake up and he's there and I roll over and I'm now facing his back. Right. So he was faced to the left and I was initially faced to the right. I roll over that morning and I'm now facing his back and I see a huge tattoo on his back. He did not have any tattoos um, prior to our break. So I'm like, oh, you've been busy, you know, on this little break, getting tatted up and stuff. What's going on? Like, let me see, you know. It's a humongous tattoo. And um, he instantly gets defensive. And I'm like, why are you getting upset about a tattoo? I I actually, like, am very interested in seeing, like, what's the design, you know, what's the meaning behind it? Like, tell me all the things, you know. I'm not judging you. I'm not upset. I'm really, really interested. And he got so freaked out. He jumped up out of the bed. He threw on a T-shirt, went to the bathroom, you know, got got dressed and kind of just dipped. And I was like, what just happened? Like, everything was cool, you know. Um... But he really started tripping over me asking him about the tattoo. So I'm like, whatever, bro. Like, it's whatever. You're tripping. Like, this is why we're on a break now. Y'all always tripping. <laughs> Y'all always tripping. Um, all right. So now let's fast forward. I do not, beyond, you know, like the blurry, um, beyond seeing what I saw when I initially woke up, I did not see any further details of the tattoo. I don't even, to this day, you know, actually, I think it was wings. I think I eventually found out they were wings, I think. But in that moment, I don't know. I didn't know what it was. He leaves, whatever. 
All right, fast forward some weeks, and I'm being nosy, snooping on uh, social media, and I was looking for... Um, I was snooping, and I went to his baby mama's page. Okay, I was. I'm just telling myself because I he had, he remember he had one kid when we when we began dating. Go to her page, right, and I see what I thought was a throwback picture of their child, the one that I know about, right? And it was a picture that I had never seen before. I'm like, oh, look at this old picture of so and so. So by this time, the child would have been, I don't know, maybe three or four. I don't know. I can't remember. But older than one. By this time, the child would have been older than one. So the picture I'm seeing is a baby baby. I'm like, oh, look at the throwback picture. See, the comments, the comments are recent. And the comments are like, you know, such and such is so cute or whatever. And the name did not match the name that I know his child's name to be. And I'm like, is this a new baby? <laughs> Woo wee, y'all! This man had gone and had another child with his first child's mother <gasps> while we were dating, and come to find out, the tattoo on his back was a tattoo of some wings with the second child's name in the middle of it. <laughs> I'd be like, 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 did you not think I was going to find out? Like, did you forget the name was on your back permanently? Like, yeah. So, yes, come to find out the tattoo was being hidden from me. Because there was a person's name, his child's name in the tattoo that he didn't want me to see. Because he knew that he cheated. So I remember calling him. Here's the thing, people. People of God. Saints and friends. Especially those of you who date women. By the time we ask questions, we already know. (laughs) So, like, let's just save everyone some energy. Let's let's just be honest. Because if I'm coming to you asking very specific questions, you got to know that I know. So I call him immediately, and I ask him a very simple question. I say, hey, how many children do you have? This should tell him that I know something. And it's a very simple answer, okay? It's a very simple answer. One, two, three, whatever, the number, one, whatever. It should be one because, you know, whatever, but it ain't. And instead of just saying the number, he starts getting all whatever, whatever, blah, 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 stuttering. Sir, what, how many kids you got? How many? How many, how many? <laughs> how many kids? <laughs> So yeah, child, he ends up, you know, confessing and that was that. So yeah, that's my dating story for today. Actually, as a matter of fact, this guy, we dated, when we began dating, he had one child. When we stopped completely, he had three or four. I have zero. You do the math. And I knew nothing of these things. I knew nothing of these things. Come to find, I mean, at the end of at the end of it, I you know put all the pieces together and I figured out the how and the when and the where, you know. But I'm like, this man was wilding out. As a matter of fact, he had multiple children while we were dating, off and on. Y'all know, um, he had multiple children while we were dating, and when I added when I added all the women that I had found out about afterwards, I literally lost count. Like it was like, I think around nine or so women that he had been with while we were dating. Disgusting. Just nasty. Just nasty. So yeah, man, I I found out about 
my dude cheating, and it all started with seeing a tattoo. Ain't that crazy? Mm. So I got to figure out how to transition from these ridiculous dating stories into let's unpack it. I don't know. Let's unpack it. <laughs> um. So like I said, I initially recorded this already, but I wanted to like, you know, get back into this travel thing now that we are free to go. Um, I love traveling, but I hate the traveling part. Does that make sense? Like, I just want to be there. Um, cause traveling can be exhausting whether you drive or fly. It can be exhausting. It's all the packing. Then it just be a lot. Right. So over the years, I've, you know, like compiled ways to, um, be more efficient and, what I want to do is just share the ways that I travel and share some things that make travel easier for me. Um, so let's start with one that I think is very important, which is avoiding travel germs. So prior to the pandemic, whenever I would travel, um, it was like a good three out of four chances that I was going to get some sort of cold or sinus infection when I got back home. It was like clockwork. You know, if I was traveling for the weekend, I'd get back on a Sunday. By that Monday morning, I'm having to like say, hey, I'm going to, you know, I got, I can't come in or, you know, I'm going to come in and work late because I'm not feeling well. And um, I would even tell them like, I guess I got a, you know, a travel bug. Like to the point, it was so regular that some of my coworkers would make fun of me like, oh Lord, you got a travel bug. What is a travel bug? And I'm like, y'all never heard, y'all not heard of this? Like, that's a thing. A travel bug is a real thing, you know? Um, and at minimum, minimum, if I was if I wouldn't get sick, I would like get a pimple or something, which is just nasty. It's like, ugh, I've been around all these people in this metal tube in the air and it's just full of germs. The air isn't like purified. It's just nasty in there. And I would have, you know, these, um, effects, whether it was a pimple on my face or getting sick. Um, and actually, I began wearing masks on the plane prior to the pandemic because of this. I had a mask that said, it's not me, it's you. Um, <laughs> and I would get the craziest stares. Um, but it's like, hey, I mean, I got to do what's best for me because this happens to me all the time. Side note, y'all. I'm back at home, so I've got my home set up, like, I've got my little wallpaper going, like, it's a real office, and the sun is all in my face. I tried to change the blinds and block out the sun, but I'm still getting these sun rays, as you see, so my bad. Um, hopefully, it's not too much of a distraction. Hopefully, it's not too much of a distraction uh, for you. So, yeah, I uh, I would get the crazy stares, but it's like, hey, I got to do what's best for me. So these are some of the ways that I keep my traveling sanitary. Um, one, I always keep my luggage off the bed. I don't place my luggage or things that I've been carrying around in the airport and things like that. I don't ever place it on the hotel bed or my, you know, personal bed when I get back home. That's nasty to me. Luggage has been going everywhere. All kinds of germs is probably on it. And I sleep in my bed and I want the bed to be a place of peace and cleanliness. Um, so I keep the luggage either on the little thing, the little fold up thing in the hotel or just on the floor. But I do not ever put it on the bed. Um, I also... I always keep a separate mesh bag for my um, dirty laundry so I can just throw that in there and it's completely separate from the things I'll be wearing because, again, if I've worn something outside or in, the, or in the airport, that's got all day on it. I don't want that mixing with the clothes I have not yet worn yet, um, the clean clothes. So, yeah, get you like a little mesh bag or some old Shein bags or um, whatever. Go find, get your laundry bag and just keep it in your um, in your luggage so it's always ready to go for your next trip. I always make sure I have some travel size Lysol spray and or Lysol wipes. And I just keep them in my um, 
in my luggage, so it's always ready to go. So when I get to the hotel, I'm spraying down the remote control. I'm spraying down uh, the charger port area. I'm spraying down the lamp stands. Anything that I, that I touch, I'm spraying down the bathroom, shower handles, the toilet handles, the sink handles, um, and of course, door handles, the blinds. Like, you know, the theme, the little stick we use to turn and open the blinds in the hotel room, I'm spraying that down. Anything that I think I'm, or I know I'm going to be touching and using, I'm spraying it down, especially the parts where I know, where I know that the um, attendants probably didn't sanitize. Their goal is, you know, to hopefully to, you know, make sure the bedding is clean and, you know, the shower and kitchen, I mean, the common areas basically are clean. They're, they're oftentimes not getting the like, all in, all in the little nitty gritty or whatever. And hotels are filthy, so I'm spraying down. And I also spray down the bedding, especially the um, the pillows where I'm going to be, you know, putting my face. Um, so, yeah, I just keep, I, so yeah, I just try to keep Lysol um, and wipes at all times on me. Also, the seats and couches, too. I don't want to be, like, sitting down, you know, telling what's done been going on with those couches in those hotel rooms. So I spray those down, too. Um, I keep my shoes separate. I like to, I don't want the sole of my shoe that's been touching the dirt and gravel and concrete to be touching clothes I'm going to wear. So I try to keep my shoes either completely separate in my luggage or um, in separate bags. So I like to use like old Shein bags, use whatever you, you know, some good old big Ziploc bags or some um, air, something that's just airtight. But yeah, um, I try to just keep my shoes separate at all times. And um, when I get back home from traveling, I immediately disinfect my luggage um, and immediately take out my dirty clothes. If I'm not going to unpack all together, which the goal for me personally is to unpack the day I get back, um, but that does not always happen. So I will at least at minimum get rid of all the dirty clothes and disinfect everything. So I'm disinfecting um and this is whether I have a soft side luggage or a hard case luggage. I'm just I'm wiping it down or spraying it down. I lift up the, the handle, lift up the luggage handle, and I, you know, spread spread all that down. The wheels, the, any the um the zippers, anything that people are touching or whatever, I'm spraying it down. I also spray down the inside. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm wiping it down. Cause you know, like, especially when you have your shoes in there or whatever. Um Dust and dirt is going to start to accumulate, you know, over time. So I'm trying to get all that out, get all that gunk out. And yeah, just keep it, keep it clean. And then, you know, I'll store it once I'm completely unpacked. And also, I think something that's totally underrated is having a clean house to come back to, right? So before I travel, I love to make sure that everything in my home is clean so that when I get back after an exhausting travel day, I'm coming home to a very peaceful, clean, clutter-free environment. So, you know, maybe I had my room a mess trying on outfits and stuff before I packed. Well, I'm going to make sure I put everything up before I leave so that when I come back, I'm not, you know, walking into a space where I've got to now unpack, do laundry, and clean up, you know, at the house or do dishes. It's like, no, nah, everything at home is taken care of. And I think it's just nice to open your door when you get back from a, a trip and it's just like, oh, I'm home. Like you should be excited. Or I don't know how you feel. I don't know what you should feel, but I think going into your home after a long trip, it should just be like a sense of peace and relaxation. Like, oh, I'm home. Um, so yeah, those are some ways that I try to avoid travel germs. And I ain't gonna lie, I loved traveling during the pandemic because everyone was required to cover their face and I didn't get sick. <laughs> I loved it. And of course, for me personally, I still mask up on the plane. Um, even now that the restrictions have lifted, it's just what's most comfortable for most comfortable for me. It helps me, you know, um, stay well. So yeah, drop in the comments some ways that you like to um, keep sanitary during your travels. I know some folks are like really extreme. They take their own bedding. There's actually a black woman who has a disposable bedding line. I forget the name of it. I'll try to remember to link it in the description, but she has a company where you can buy disposable bedding. So when you're traveling, you throw on these disposable sheets, pillows, and when you're done, you can just toss it. Um... 
So yeah, some are like, well, some will go to that extreme. I'm not going to that extreme. I ain't doing all that. Um, but I do think it's very important for us to stay sanitary, especially when you're going back and forth to like different climates and stuff. When I was in Utah and I would travel back and forth to Alabama, man, my body was like all over the place. I would be, you know, in a very, very dry climate, going to a very, very humid climate, and, and it would just affect my sinuses and all the things. So yeah, do whatever you can to stay well. And to avoid germs. Those are my uh, germaphobe tips. Now on to some travel hacks and some just general tips. So one thing that helps me a ton is having a separate toiletries bag that is always stocked and ready to go. So when I pack, that's one of the most important things in my luggage. Um, I just pick it up and go, right? Like I may have to re-up on my soap or toothpaste, things like that. But for the most part, Everything's ready to go. Um, and I need to just maybe throw one or two things in there. And I pop, plop it in my luggage and we're good to go. Um, as y'all know, TSA only allows a certain size liquid through uh, security. And of course, that's for carry-on. Um, so I get travel size everything and I have it just separate in my toiletry bag. So I have a separate deodorant, separate toothpaste, separate soap, separate sh um, razors, separate shower caps, separate lotions and moisturizers and oils and all the things. I Separate Q-tips. I have all that separate um, and it just stays ready to go. And it's, and it's all in travel size. So I'm not worrying about the, the, um, the size of the bottles being too big for TSA. Like I was saying, I just keep a separate toiletries bag. So I would encourage you to begin building your toiletry bag. Um, start going to, you know, Target, Walgreens, Walmart, you know, and stock up on the things that you're going to always need in your toiletry bag. Um, and just keep it there ready to go. Um, it's just, it just makes for such, uh, it just helps make the packing process so much easier. Um, so, yeah. I also like to maximize my carry-on. I'm not a checked, I'm not a checked bag kind of girl. I want all my stuff with me. I number one don't like the idea of baggage handlers throwing my stuff all around. I don't like the idea of them possibly going through my stuff. And I also don't like the idea of luggage possibly getting lost. And all of those are possibilities. So I prefer, if I can, you know, um control it, I prefer to Take a carry-on. So ways that I maximize my carry-on space is I take my, of course, regular carry-on luggage with, you know, my, my roller wheel carry-on. And then I also take a tote bag and I'll either do a crossbody bag or a fanny pack. So the fanny pack is on my person so I can sit with that and buckle my seatbelt without a problem. So that's the third bag. And if I do a crossbody bag, I can just like stuff it in my tote right before boarding and take it right back out when I'm on the plane. Because all they're worried about is, are you going on the plane with two bags? They're not checking how many bags you got once you're on the plane. Not for real, for real. So that, the minute I'm on that jetway, I take my bag right back out, my crossbody, you know, and then and now I have three bags. Um... So that's one way I maximize my carry-on. You got to find ways, okay? You got to find ways. And another way I maximize my carry-on space is I plan my outfits for the trip. And then I, I plan my outfits and then I roll my clothes. I roll them tightly and this creates more space in my carry-on. It helps a ton. It really, really does. And I plan my outfits because I also want to maximize my time once I'm going wherever I'm going. Whether it's business or leisure, I want to maximize my time and I want to not have to worry about what I'm wearing. Maybe I'm gotta, I got to figure out what day I'm wearing what, but I at least know, all right, I got that outfit together. That, that can be for dinner one night. That can be for adventure one day. That can be for whatever, whatever, whatever. I, I at least have my options. And I include extra stuff, of course, but I have full outfit, so I'm not having to figure out, well, what pants does this shirt go to? Or do I even have a skirt for this top? Or I, I ain't got to worry about all that. My outfits are planned. Um... And I add like one or two extra and I roll them tightly. And this helps me maximize space and time a ton. So I encourage you to play your office. And of course, leave room, you know, for for whatever, right? Maybe you don't feel like wearing heels um, once you get there. Maybe you don't feel like being casual once you get there or whatever. Your plans may completely change, but at least you have like 
a guide to go off of and you're not um, wasting a ton of time trying to figure out what to wear. Because that can become so frustrating, you know? It's like it can ruin your whole day when your outfit ain't right. So just plan for it ahead of time. Um, Another way, another hack is taking advantage of Black Friday. Um, So we all have our splurge. We all have the things that we like to splurge on, right? You know, and for Black Friday, oftentimes it's um, products. But for me, I like to travel. So I like to take that time to um, get travel deals. Last Black Friday, I ended up booking a trip to, that's when I booked the trip to um, Cancun that we took earlier this year. And it was, it was dumb cheap. It was dumb cheap. So yeah, I encourage you to look look um, on your favorite airlines website. Look, start looking at you know your favorite hotel or whatever, or start looking at resorts and seeing. It's about the time of the year. Start seeing you know what deals they may be advertising now, or just have a lookout. You know, um, and also use whatever travel apps you love to use. I know some folks love Sky Scanner. Some use Sky Scanner. Some use Hopper, um, it's a bunch out there, y'all. I'm now that's not what I am. It's like the the travel guru when it comes to getting the best the best like flight deals and stuff because I'm a I like the airline I like you know and a lot of these travel deals be specific to like Frontier and Spirit and I just am a bit too afraid to risk it all um, to save to save a coin so. I don't always get the best flight deal, but hotel, um, all that other stuff, resorts and stuff. Yeah, like the the the, the resort we stayed at in, in Cancun was, y'all, it was so immaculate. It was like this, it was this open concept where the lobby was inside and outside at the same time. It was it was phenomenal, and it was like so cheap for the value that we got. So Black Friday, check out travel deals. Um, And yeah, start planning your Memorial Day trips now or your July 4th trips now or your next summer trips. Start planning that now. Another thing that helps out with travel is um, brand loyalty. So most travel brands have um, reward reward uh, programs that you can sign up for, right? So the more you stay with or fly with that brand, the more points you earn, which yields more travel. So brand loyalty yields rewards. Those rewards yield more travel. So like for me, I'm a Delta girl. Um, their reward system is not amazing, um, but it does come in handy, especially like when I was living out in Utah and I was, you know, traveling back and forth on the holiday and during the holidays to Alabama, right? So maybe I don't have enough points to get a whole flight free, but it does has this thing where if you have so many points, you can get 50 bucks off or hundred bucks off. I think for every 5,000 points, you can get 50 bucks off. Or for every 10,000 points, you can get 50 bucks off. Something like that, right? So if I've got 20,000 points, I mean, I have enough for a full flight, but I can get, you know, some money off the flight that I'm going to buy. And that comes in handy. Um, I'm also a Marriott girl, right? Um, I may not be traveling in a way where I can get a whole week for free every year or a couple times a year. But um, after I've stayed with them for a good six, seven nights, I got a, you know, a good night free and that comes in handy too, especially nowadays where I like, I just, I just need maybe a good staycation or you guys are aware of my living situation now. So, you know, like if I just need a good night away for a weekend, I can do that, you know? So, re- so brand loyalty helps a ton. I get it though. If you're chasing the deal, you may have to hop around and skip around to different brands, right? Like if you're, if you're doing the sky scanner thing, you're doing the, a uh, hopper thing, you may, you know, uh, if you're chasing the deal, you may not be able to do that. I get that. But brand loyalty does yield rewards. Maybe not as quickly, but over time, it for sure yields, yields rewards. So that's a general tip. Um, also, what I like to do when I'm traveling, y'all, um, and this has proven to come in handy, especially lately, when I'm traveling, especially to a popular city, even if it's just Atlanta, what I love to do is go on Open Table or Resi, the apps, and just make reservations at a restaurant, you know? Um, 
because what I don't want to be doing is waiting one and two hours for some food when I'm already hungry, right? Or I got a party of three and it's just so hard to get in somewhere that's really popular. I like to just go ahead and make a reservation weeks ahead of time. And even if my plans change, I can just cancel it, right? Most restaurants don't charge cancellation fee. Now, these Atlanta places, they be charging child. So you got to, you know, make sure you look at the cancellation policy. But for for the most part, if my plans change, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that reservation 24 hours ahead of time. You know, I don't want to do it last minute. But just I want to have something on the calendar so that me, so that I or, you know, the group I'm with, that we're we're ready just in case we need to, you know, get a quick bite or have dinner somewhere. And we got to think about nowhere. Um, when I was in New York for my birthday, I had multiple reservations on standby. I don't think we went to any of them. No, we didn't go to any of those reservations. We ended up canceling all of them, but it was nice to have them on standby just in case, you know, it's all right, we're done for the day. Let's do dinner. We we don't know where we want to go. Let's go where we plan to go. Um, it just helps a ton because... Yeah, again, maximizing time, it really helps the trip because you have more time to do fun stuff. Now, this tip, oh my God, this one is a game changer, y'all. This one is a game changer for international travel. So I told y'all earlier that me going to Mexico earlier in this year was my first time traveling internationally, right? And I was super um, nervous about customs. I did not know what to expect at all. Like, I don't, I just didn't know what it was. I didn't know. I just did not know. Well, for those of you who are not aware, customs is, you're only required to go through customs customs when you're entering the city. So once you have landed wherever you're going, that's when you enter, that's when you go through customs. So it's not when you get into the airport, it's when you're landing to your final destination. So when we got to Mexico, we went through customs. And when we got back to the States, we went through customs. Well, there's this app, and this is specific to America. There's an app called Mobile Passport Control, MPC, that will allow you to expedite the customs process, y'all. And when I say expedite, I mean expedite, okay? So the customs line, when we got to Mexico, it wasn't too bad, but it was pretty lengthy. It wasn't too bad, though. When we got back to the States, got back to Atlanta, the customs line was ridiculous, y'all. Well, the day of our flight, the day we came back to the States, we downloaded the app. We put our passport information into the app. It's a completely free app. And, um, and maybe I should, I should, maybe I should keep this into myself. This is because it's so good. Oh, well, whatever. I'm going to put y'all on game. So we put our information into the app and, um, Like, that's literally it, right? Like, it does all those things for you. So once we got to the customs line, we're like, crap, this is ridiculous. Well, we see this sign, almost like TSA PreCheck, right? There's a separate line for TSA PreCheck, a separate line for Clear. It's a separate line for NPC, for Mobile Passport Control. Y'all, we go to that line, there was nobody in the line. Y'all should have seen those people's faces. The folks that was in line... They was looking at us like, who are y'all? Where y'all come from? How y'all get to the front of the line? We got to the the very front of the line. We skipped the entire line, y'all. The entire line. So we get to the very front, and y'all, we was, I promise y'all, them folks was mad at us. Like, we've been sitting here for a whole hour, and y'all just going to come in here and get in front of us? Yes, because we have this app, the NPC app. So if you have any international trips planned in the near future, download this app. And again, this is specific to the states. I'm not sure if this app works um, if you're going, you know, somewhere else. Because, again, it didn't work for us in Mexico. We couldn't use it in Mexico. It was, you know, specific to coming back to the states. So if you are in the states, if you live in the states and you're traveling and you when you come back home to go through customs, get this app. It will save you so much time because I, pro- because I promise y'all, we would have been in that passport. We would have been in that customs line for at least an hour, at least. And that's, you know, after getting off the plane and walking God knows how many miles to get, you know, to the customs line. Like, again, traveling can be so exhausting. So like anything that saves time, I'm down. Okay. Um, so yeah, y'all, that thing had me excited. Like that thing had me so excited. Like what? Is that easy? So yeah, passport, mobile passport control. Um, another thing too, y'all. Um, 
I like to get, and this is a preference, but I think it does help though, because again, when I travel, I'm trying to maximize my time to enjoy my vacation or do whatever, right? And even if it's for business, I still want to maximize my time in the evenings, you know, to do what I want to do, um, to have some sort of fun. So I like to do everything I need to do for the trip before the trip. I know emergencies happen. Sometimes, you know, you need to, you know, go to a CVS or a Target for something quick. Um, But for the most part, I like to get everything I need to get done before the trip. So I'm shopping for the trip before the trip. I'm getting my hair done for the trip before the trip. I'm getting my nails and toes done before the trip. If I need snacks and stuff for the room or whatever, I'm doing that before the trip. Now, granted, you can't do everything. If you're getting like food and stuff, some things you can't carry on the plane or it's just not, you know convenient. So maybe you need to, you know, go to a quick grocery store or something like that. That's fine. But for the most part, I'm trying to do everything I can do before the trip. So I ain't got to worry about it. Um, And and again, this is a more of a personal preference because it irritates me to have to like prepare for a trip when we get to the trip. It's like we're wasting valuable time. Like we don't get to do this all the time. You know, is vacation for a reason? Why are we not vacationing? Why are we preparing for the trip when we're already on the trip? And again, stuff happens, right? Like I remember one time for my birthday, I got my nails done and got some cute design or whatever. And I got this bow on my nails, like the like an actual, an actual bow. Well, it broke off the day we went on this trip. So when I got to where I was going, I did find a nail shop to fix it, right? And I was so annoyed with myself because I'm like, I don't want to be in this nail shop a random nail shop waiting to be seen, you know, when I could be enjoying the resort or enjoying the city or whatever. Um, things happen though, right? But if I can help it, I'm getting everything I need to get before the trip. Unless it's a part of your plan, right? Like I was watching, um, I was looking at um, Chloe and Bailey, one of them, Chloe, Haley, Hallie. Chloe, not said their last name is Bailey, Lord Jesus. Hallie Bailey. Haley, the younger one. I was looking at her post one day and she and her boyfriend, like they just like, they went to Vegas for the day. You know, they didn't take anything with them or no, for the weekend. They did something real fancy where they, you know, went to Vegas with nothing and they bought everything on their trip. That's, that's part of your plan. That's cool. That's actually very fly. It's a, it's a flex actually. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I'm going to be ready for the trip before, beforehand. Again, time is everything, right? Like, we ain't got all the time in the world. We're going to be here for three to five to seven days, you know. And I'm a weekend getaway kind of girl. I do quick trips, right? So we ain't got but three, four days. Let's maximize the time. Um. Oh, yeah. And this is this is not like a, a germ thing. It's just like, I don't know. I just like doing it. I like adding dryer sheets to my luggage. Um, to make it smell fresh. So yeah, like throw some dryer sheets, some bounce sheets or some gang sheets in your luggage and it smells really good. Yeah. Okay. Now let's get to like group travel. Who child? I, listen, y'all, every friend is not a travel friend and that is okay. And I've had to learn this over and over and over and over again. Like I promise y'all, a relationship is not tested until you have traveled with them. It teaches you so much about yourself and so much about the other person or people. Um, so I'd like to share a few tips about smooth, about having sm- a smoother group travel experience. Um one thing that I've learned that helps, one thing that I've that, that I've learned over the years that helps a ton is being transparent about your budget. Um, if you are going with some folks who don't care nothing about budget, they're just like swiping it up. Maybe that is in the group that you travel with, or you let them know up front, like, Hey, I don't have it like y'all. So like, I'm going to do this, you know, or just, just, um, make sure you're not placing yourself in a compromising position. Um, be transparent, you know, like, so, that, so, so for example, that may look like letting your people know, like, hey, this is my budget and, you know, um, I prefer 
say you're the host of the trip or you're planning the trip and, you know, you're taking care of, taking care of the accommodations, taking care of reservations, um, and you prefer to get reimbursed immediately, right? Let that be known because maybe you use some of your trip money to make these reservations or to make the room, I mean, to reserve the room or whatever, right? So let that be known versus maybe, you know, you being okay with getting reimbursed at the end of the trip where, you know, you're settling up at the end of it all. Just be honest and open. If you're traveling with folks, I'm hoping they're your friends. So you should be able to have these conversations openly without judgment and without there being any like weird vibes to it, right? Just be open and honest. Um, Also, like another thing about budgets, if you are a person who you like everything to be split down the middle equally, you know, let that be known. Because some people, it's just a matter of like fairness, right? Not so much equality, like a more of an equitable thing versus everything being exactly equal. So like maybe like for me, it's all right. If you want to get brunch, I'll get dinner. Right. Or if you get the lift there, I'll get the Uber bag. Right. It's like give and take versus, uh, all right. So dinner was 150 bucks. So you give me 75. I get, like, it's like, I mean, whatever works for you. Right. But if you have a preference, let that be known so that you're not getting irritated or frustrated with, you know, money stuff. Because the last thing you want coming in between you and a friend is money stuff, right? So be open and honest and like take the shame off of it. Like, hey man, I need this money because I actually was going to use it during the trip. Okay. I'll cash up you or I'll Venmo you or, you know, Apple pay you, whatever. Just be honest about it, about your expectations. Um, I also, I've also found that it works to travel. I've also found that it works best to travel with like-minded people or at least just know who you're traveling with. Like, so that you can adjust your expectations accordingly, right? Um, For example, if you're going on a trip and you want to explore and be very adventurous, but the people you're going with, they all want to relax and just retreat and kick their feet up, that needs to be discussed or that, or, or you at least need to be aware of that so that you can adjust your expectations. Like, oh, snap. All right. Well, I was trying to do all the things, but if we want, we're just going, you know, kick back. All right. I can adjust my expectations so that I'm not disappointed and they're not disappointed because you're dragging them along to every single adventure, you know, every single um, exploration or every single activity. Just, you know, like be honest about it. I heard T.D. Jakes talk about this. He says that for him. Vacation is, you know, time to just like do all the things, to go, to see, to do. And for his wife, Sarita, she's like, no, I want to sleep. You know, and they talked about, you know, having friction there, like because their ideas of vacation were very different. So just be very honest with your friends about and your or your travel partners about what your ideas of vacation are. And it's no harm, no foul. So it, it's going to be given to right? If I want to relax, and they want to explore. Well, maybe we meet in the middle somewhere. Um, so yeah, travel with folks who have the same travel goals as you, like we want to do the same things or get the same experience out of this. Um, so like recently I went to New York to celebrate my birthday and, um, one of my friends was like, let's go out every night. And I'm like, I don't need all that. Like before I leave here, I need one good turn up, but that's all I need. I don't need it three Two, three nights back to back. That's a lot for me, right? Like, I'm cool with actually turning in 9, 10 o'clock, maybe the first night, because I didn't travel. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired. But that last night, I need a good, I turn up. <laughs> um, And that we did. And I let that be known, like, hey, I'm down to do whatever. Like, I do have an itinerary, but I'm very flexible. I don't care what we do. But this is but this what I, is what I have to do. Like I must, you know, do these these, these things. Um, just let it be known. Let it be known. Um, I think it's important to be aware, like if you're with, if you're traveling with a night owl or a morning person. Um, I am a night owl. My friends know this. They know that I'm not getting up or doing anything before noon on vacation. No, ma'am. I am not operating on work get work on work hours on vacation. I'm not getting up at seven and eight o'clock in the morning. No, I don't need to have breakfast before noon. I can do that at one o'clock. Thank you. I'll see you at one. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> 
But at 1 a.m., I'm I'm all the way live. 2 a.m., I'm up, ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Um, so those things matter because if you got a, if I, if you got friends who are extremely adventurous and they're morning people, they're ready to go at 7 a.m. and you like, mm-mm. So in order for them to, you know, have a fulfilling travel experience, just let it be known, like, hey, you want to you want to go get breakfast or go to the gym or go uh, explore the city? Do that and have fun and show me the pictures afterwards. But I will see you in the afternoon. And also same for me, because if I'm a night owl and they're not, I'm up sitting 10 o'clock ready to go, ready to turn up to go somewhere, and they're in their pajamas ready to go to sleep. And I'm like, well, dang, like, what am I going to do, you know? I um had to figure that out when I went to Mexico. Like, they were all legit in pajamas at, like, 9, 10 o'clock. And I was so like, well, what do I do? Because this, like, 9 o'clock to me is, like, 5 p.m. Like, okay, I'm getting ready for dinner, and then what? So I literally, like, you know, hung out with strangers, and we had the best time because I just wasn't ready to go to sleep. Um, so, yeah, like, be okay. So that leads me to my next point. Like, be okay with, well, I, I, I kind of already said this, but, like, be okay with doing things alone, right? Like, if there are time conflicts, then schedule alone time and things where you can do by yourself, right? Go grab a quick bite to eat by yourself or go on a walk by yourself to do something, right? So that you're not frustrated with your travel friends because they're asleep and you're up or vice versa. Um, Also, I think it's very important. Oh, yeah. And when it comes to this whole like um, knowing who you're with, I think it's important to know like, are y'all going to be eating local or you're going to be eating like, you know, your eating things you're comfortable with, like the basic stuff, right? The things you're used to. I think that's very important because, um, yeah, we got to eat, right? And it needs to be, it should be, at least it should be enjoyable. Um, And that I've learned can really put a damper on travel is where we're eating and all the things. It it matters a lot. So, and I've been on both ends of that. Um. Of that type of frustration uh, of being the one who, yeah, it, it can just be, it can be a lot. So let let that be known. Like, you know what? I don't, if I go to another country, I don't need to have the local stuff. Give me Americanize everything, you know, right? Or you're someone like, you know what? I, I will not. I'm the kind of person. I'm, I'm, it, it depends. It depends. But for the most part, if I'm going somewhere new, I do not want to get anything I can get at home, right? I don't want to see a Chick-fil-A. If I'm in, you know, like a place I've never been to before. I remember, man, I remember going to, um, and this might be one of my shades of dating stories, but I remember going to San Diego with my boyfriend at that time and legit got in a full-blown argument because the last day out, we're in San Diego and I'm like, where are we going for brunch? And he's like, we'll just get something on the way out and because we drove. We drove from Arizona to San Diego. And I'm like, yeah, but like, can we plan it though? Because when you're on your way out, we're just going to start hitting random exits on the interstate and it's just going to be all basic stuff. And we literally ended up at a Popeye's and I was livid. You mean to tell me this is our first time in California and this is our last day here and we ended up at Popeye's for lunch? Are you kidding? I was hot. Because his thing, being a man... Worried about, you know, beating traffic, getting, you know, getting out of the city to get the trip going or whatever. And we can just get some on the way out. And I'm like, no, I want, this is a part of the trip. The trip ain't over yet. I was hot. So yes, food matters, bro. Food matters. (laughs) Let it be known because we legit got in a full-blown argument over Popeye's. Sure did. Like silent treatment, all the things. Hot. Okay. Um, Speaking of food, also consider like diet restrictions and eating preferences and allergies and things like that. Um, Are you vegan? Are you vegetarian? Are you flexitarian Um, when you're traveling with folks? Because where you go to dinner, um, it will, that should be determined based on like, you know, everyone's eating habits. Um, So yeah, just what I'm really saying, y'all, is over-communicate. Over-communicate. Um, because it may not sound like it's that deep. Like, man, it's a lot. It ain't, it ain't that deep. But, baby, 
I'm sure y'all have stories about going on trips with friends and it just falls apart. And you're like, well, what, what freaking happened? And oftentimes it is unmet expectations or someone got frustrated or disappointed because something wasn't said or, or someone, a lot of times it's assumptions. I assume that we were all on the same page. I assume that we all had the same travel goal, the same travel objective. I assumed, um, and no, we all have this stuff in our heads. And if it's not spoken, it is a setup for misunderstanding, especially if it's more than two people. It's gone. Yeah. Mm-mm. So over communicate. And it ain't got to be serious. And it doesn't have to be a business meeting. But I think these things should be discussed, you know, while you're planning a trip via text, get a group chat going, you know. Listen, get stuff in writing, child. That's another thing. Cover yourself. I said this. Anyways, um, but yeah, like, I don't want to make it sound like it's work, but I'm just saying, bro, like, if you want to enjoy yourself, take care of these little, these little things that can ruin, see, be the small foxes, huh? Take care of them little small foxes beforehand. <laughs> what is it, the small foxes that spoil the vine? Uh-uh, get rid of them small foxes so you can enjoy the vine, which is the vacation, <laughs> Me and my analogies, Lord Jesus. That's Bible, though. That's Bible. Um. So yeah, like, oh, this is a good example about communication. Like, um, say, uh, so like I'm remote, right? I work, I work remotely. If my friends invite me on a vacation, I'd be like, all right, yeah, cool. But I'm gonna be working from, you know during the week, right? Or if we go on, on a Thursday to Sunday, well, that Thursday and Friday, I might be working. Um, so just let that, you know, be, keep that in mind. Or vice versa. You know, when I went to New York, my best friend, Mia, came along with me. She was working two or three of those days, two of those days. Um, so what that means is during these times, she is not available, which means what? I'm free to do what I want to do without her um, and vice versa, She is not expecting me to wait on her um, because, you know, she doesn't want me to do anything without her. No, it's just, it's understood or we have made it clear that go ahead and live your best life. And when she's off, she'll catch up or vice versa. When I'm off, I'll catch up with you. That's just how it works. I'm never expecting, you know, anyone to wait on me if I'm working, right? Um, Because the trip is a vacation. If I'm working, that's on me. But I'm not going to impose that, you know, on other folks. Go enjoy and I'll figure it out. I'm going to be mad. Not mad. Not mad. I'm going to be a little jealous, right? That I missed out on whatever activity, but I'm working. So I'll get what I can. I'll enjoy what I can. So I think that's an example of like how you communicate like, all right, this is what's expected. I'm I'm not going to be kiki kiki in because I got meetings and stuff. Um, like I said earlier, voicing your objective beforehand, like I want to party, I want to turn up, um, I want to go crazy, let that be known. Um, Because I did, child, and mission accomplished, because the day we came back from New York, I went to sleep at 7 a.m. And yeah, it was a good, it was a good night. (laughs) It was a great night. Um, but I let that be known ahead of time. Like, I don't care what we do, but I do want one night where we just, like, stay up all night and just have a good old time because it's the city that, it's the city that never sleeps. So let's put it to the test. And we did. And it was grand. <laughs> um, I heard this quote on TBTB, which is the Bald and the Beautiful podcast that has Kevin on stage, Miss Kevin on stage, Angel Lakita Moore Tanksley and her husband Marcus Tanksley. And one of them said, I think it was Melissa, but one of them said, You find out how much you like someone when you're traveling. You find out how much you love someone when there's a delay, you know? Um, and I'm just, I'm telling you, man, traveling, it, it'll test. It'll test some, some things because you realize how you operate under pressure, how the other person operates under pressure, when they're exhausted, when they're tired, when they're hungry. Huh? It'd be all the little things, bro. It'd be all the little things. Like, and so I'm thankful for for the travel buddies that I have because, like I said, it'd be some little things that can just mess up the vibe. 
And we want good vibes on the trip. We we can we can deal with moody vibes at home and sad vibes and frustrated vibes at home. But on the trip, we want good vibes. Okay, we reserve the trip for we reserve the good. Yeah, we need we need good vibes. <laughs> um. So yeah, and and because of these experiences, I've had to sort of let go of some of my fairy tale travel dreams. You know, like it is a dream of mine to get all of my friends together um, for like a cabin trip, a cabin retreat or something like that, right? Like I've planned it out. I have it all down like to it. I have the itinerary and everything. I know where we're going. But when it's time to plan, I just kind of get hesitant because it boils, it, 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 it goes back to this. It's just like, it's probably, it probably ain't going to work. Because for me, I... um. I, I'm thankful and blessed to have an amazing group of friends. The downside of that is my group of friends, they're not friends. They don't know each other, the majority of them, right? So I don't have like a group of college friends or a group of high school friends or a group of friends I met wherever, wherever. Like, you no, know, I got one friend here, one friend there, one friend there, one friend there, one friend there, and they're all my friends. But they, I, like I'm the common denominator. So if I have a trip with all of them, I'm the common denominator, so now I would have to, you know, like accommodate everyone and, and attend to everyone versus everyone just having fun together. And I, and maybe it could work, right? Um, but also, it probably wouldn't because there's so many different personalities. This one don't know that one. That one don't know this one. Um, and it's like, you know what? Maybe that dream we're going to just put to the side for later. We're going to just put it on the shelf. And that's Okay. You know, I I get my one or two, and we just go. Um, it's just, it's and it's the weirdest thing, but you like you know who you travel well with. You know, you know. I've even found that it's like okay, I can travel really really well with like one person, and if we add one person, the vibe is off, right? Or if we add one person, it. It gets even better, right? It's like, it's crazy how one person can like shift so much of a dynamic. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all, y'all got some experiences. Y'all know, y'all know. Um, so yeah, like I just say be okay with your fairy tale travel dreams, um, group travel dreams. Maybe not coming to pass. That's okay. But whatever you do though, travel, go see the world. Go. By yourself, one other person, just go. Don't be waiting. Go. Go see do. So yeah, those are my travel tips and travel hacks and travel suggestions and recommendations. Comment below some of your favorite travel hacks, some things that come in really, really handy for you. I would love to know and I would love for you to share with the rest of us um, what apps you use, um, all the things, whatever tips and tricks you got. Please share with us in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. If you're just listening, I'd love for you to share too. Hop on over to social media on Instagram or Facebook and pop in the comments what you be doing, what works for you, you know? Um, so yeah, thank you for doing that. Let's get into brownie points. Brownie points is a segment that we use to give ourselves kudos for something that we're recently proud of. We use this segment. We take this time to celebrate all the victories, small victories, huge victories, whatever it is. This is our time to um, pat ourselves on the back because we do enough of beating ourselves up. So we need time to love on ourselves. And this is that time. So for you, whatever that is. Whatever you're recently proud of, write it down in a memo, post it on Facebook, go live, just or just sit in silence and just reflect on it. Whatever it is, honor yourself in this moment. This week, I'm giving myself brownie points for finally taking care of my car. I got it washed. I got it detailed. Um, I had, my, actually, um, my, my cousin has a mobile detailing service, um, and I asked him to come over and he did and got my car together. It looks amazing. The tires are just shining. I'm like, oh, I ain't seen you like this in a long time, good. Um, so I'm so proud because I've been on the road a ton and I just have been incredibly busy. I've been swamped, y'all. And car maintenance is always on the very, 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 very end of my list. It's just something I don't want to worry about. It's something I wish I could like just 
outsource completely and delegate to dog on my husband, wherever he is. Hello, can you hurry up so you can take care of my car, put gas in it and wash it, get the oil changed, okay? Now, certain gender roles I subscribe to, and that is one of them. Sir, you're going to be taking care of all that, okay? I don't want. I, I just want to drive it. I just want to drive the car. I do not want to put gas in it. I, do not, I don't want to wash it. I don't want to do nothing. <laughs> I don't. just want to drive a clean car. I don't want to maintain the clean car. I just want to drive the clean car. That's it. So, yes, I am proud that I got it detailed. Um, and it looks amazing for the first time in a long time. So, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please share with me in the comments what you are giving yourself brownie points for. Whew. Well, that was longer than I expected. I thought it was going to be real, real quick. But, Charlie, thank God. Got a little lengthy. Anyways, that's all I have for you. Um, please follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Shades of Brown Podcast. If you'd like to buy some podcast merch, please visit everythingleb.myspreadshop.com or just click the link in the description below. If you'd like to become a sponsor, please click the link in the description below. That would be so greatly appreciated. If you'd like to support the podcast in ways that do not cost you money, there are plenty of options for you. You can subscribe to my mailing list. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Everything LEB. You can, um, of course, share this with your friends, with your group chat. You can leave a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. Um, all of those things help me a ton. I greatly appreciate it. For those links to my mailing list and YouTube channel, they are in the description below. And I greatly appreciate all you do to support this podcast. If you yourself want to start a podcast, but you're just not sure where to start, um, or you're needing help with what hardware to buy or what software to download, click the link in my bio. I've got a free um, podcast starter kit. And if that isn't enough for you, you need a little bit more help, I'm happy to consult with you. Click the link below to schedule a free consultation. I'd love to help you get that started because your voice deserves to be heard as well. So yeah, y'all, thank y'all so much for uh, tuning in and all you do to support Shades of Brown. I really appreciate it. So as always, I'd like to leave you with this. I hope that you be well, love well, and be loved well. You deserve that. Until next time. Bye.